for Lincoln County, and it looks like we're going to continue with that area. Um, again, radar indicated, no change on that portion of the warning as we speak. And in fact, at this moment, they're actually going to lift Scott Lincoln from the tornado warnings. So the central part of Lincoln County, the most extensive part of that now extends into Lyon County, an extensive straight line winds moving northeast at 60 miles per hour. That's your Larchwood area. That would be this side of uh, that storm as we speak. Okay, I know um, as we go through this coverage this morning, uh, we're doing our best here to re- calibrate some of the latest data coming in. Uh, just to do a quick relapse of this, and I will say at this point, folks in southwest Minnesota, again... It's going down the line here, southwestern Minnesota, the leading edge of this. Uh, we've had that tornado warning, which is uh, in effect for uh, those locations there across southeastern South Dakota, I believe going into Rock County, Minnesota. That is out until 2.30 this morning. So for another 15 minutes, we will continue to watch that. The latest report coming in here, uh, radar indicated tornado located over Valley Springs. This is 11 miles west of Laverne and moving to the east at 45 miles per hour. So we are continuing to follow these storms here in eastern and southeastern South Dakota, moving to the east rather quickly. They're coming through good 60, 65 miles per hour and along with it, we've had uh, the very strong winds. We've had numerous tornado warnings come in with it as well as we are following these storms in southeastern Kelloland. And we also have a couple of storms there into northeastern South Dakota as well. We are following those two as uh, the ones into northeastern Kelloland are out mainly due to uh, hail about an inch in diameter and they may have a couple of wind gusts as well into northeastern South Dakota. So these storms are moving to the east. I know Brian mentioned before into northwestern Iowa during the day, we were able to build a little more energy. Temperatures returning to the 80s today in Iowa, some of that nudged up into Minnesota. So as these storms are moving to the east, that is something that uh, we will continue to follow with, uh, again, the latest here being a tornado warning uh, continues here for Rock County, Minnesota and uh, extreme eastern count, uh, Minnehaha County out for about another 10 to 15 minutes. It'll take us to the bottom of the hour with that tornado warning. And we will also watch, uh, Brian mentioned two cancels Lincoln County, South Dakota, but it does continue Lyon County, Iowa with a tornado warning out until 2.30 uh, as well. And again, that was the storm that we talked about that was uh, near the Canton area, started just to the west and northwest of Canton. That is now northeast of Canton by about uh, 15 miles. That is a very fast moving system as well, 60 miles per hour. So we have these uh, tornado warnings which are out across southeastern South Dakota as they are moving to the east very quickly. A good clip here at 60 to 65 miles per hour. And again, we are uh, continuing our coverage here during the overnight hours. Here we are 2.15 in the morning. Very dangerous situation here. You need a way to alert yourself, wake yourself up here. Uh, weather radio is a great job to do that. The thunder, of course. We have numerous lightning flashes with these storms. People wondering what's going on with the weather. And that is why we are on live with our coverage of severe weather here in southeastern South Dakota. Now moving into Minnesota and northwestern Iowa. So we'll continue to follow these storms and continue our coverage as these are now moving into locations that do have a severe thunderstorm watch in effect until 8 o'clock this morning in Iowa and Minnesota. And behind it, we'll have more stable air, but things may reload again for tomorrow. And tomorrow, we'll have to go through this again. It all depends on the timing of things, as we can take a look here at Futurecast to give you an idea as we are following these storms through the overnight hours and into early tomorrow morning. We could still have a couple of lingering thunderstorms, and then we'll see how things do reload as we do go into the afternoon and evening for tomorrow. As we'll continue to see that south-southeast wind, that will keep our moisture around. That will keep the instability around. And then finally, as that parent low moves out, that will be another round of thunderstorms. Strong to severe weather, probably a little earlier tomorrow. During the afternoon, during the evening, we'll have to uh, probably break in for coverage once again. So uh, any new warnings that uh, we have here? Yeah, we do. Uh, we want to mention here Coddington County, new severe thunderstorm warning in effect for you folks this morning. Let's. 
pan the maps up here to the north. And again, there have been a number of cells up here as uh, as we speak here, moving north at about 40 miles per hour. Western Duel, Hamlin, southeastern Coddington County until 3 a.m. Wind gusts of 70 miles per hour, quarter size hail. And again, that is the radar indicated severe thunderstorm warning. Also, I just got a new update on the tornado warning for Rock County, Minnesota. Northern Rock County now has a tornado warning. Again, we are experiencing right now, there's a temporary uh, power outage here on some of the, the radar connections. So the warning area that I'm gonna highlight right now, in fact, I'm gonna do this here, Scott, with just a, uh, a little stronger uh, box here, if you will on the computer. Let me do that quickly here for you. This is Northern Rock County right here. This is the area we're concerned about, north of Laverne. Uh, moving northeast at 47. Radar indicated tornado until 245. Thunderstorms with tornado potential and extensive straight line wind damage located near Sherman or 10 miles northwest of Laverne moving east at 45. Okay, so right now, this area of Northern Rock County is uh, our main problem zone. And again, that is a storm here moving. And we're going to do that storm tracker for you live here this morning to the east at 45. And as the communities pop up here on the radar screen, that puts the tornado threat past Beaver Creek or near Beaver Creek here at 226. Again, the, the northern end of the county is more likely to experience that. So Hardwick would be of particular concern, 237. Edgerton, Minnesota also here, the storm track at 244. And uh, again, these are Doppler radar indicated tornadoes, but with the time of day it is, here we are, 220 in the morning, you can't see, and these things are very difficult to uh, identify in the dark. So we want you to be in a place of shelter right now on that storm for Rock County, Minnesota. That's our uh, biggest concern at the present moment. We do have another cluster of severe thunderstorms farther to the north. Uh, we'll bring up here into Clark County. Uh, we have additional severe thunderstorm warnings there until 3 a.m. And this whole cluster around Watertown, mainly a hail threat, but there's also some wind threats developing there too. So we're gonna watch that very carefully. Also, I just got a new extension of the tornado warning in Lyon County, Iowa. Okay, so Lyon County, now we're talking Rock Rapids, now an extension of that tornado warning to Worthington. Okay, so that area is now under a tornado warning for Southern Nobles, that includes Northwestern or Northeastern Lyon County, Northern Osceola, and also now the Southeastern part of Rock County in Minnesota. So this whole area that I'm gonna shade right here, this is your tornado warning area right now and again this is a doppler radar indicated tornado capable and it's actually near rock rapids moving to the northeast at about 65 to 70 miles per hour i know that the outage here is not showing that as clearly as i'd like to show you right at the present second here scott but the storm movement is now moving into lyon county as we speak and uh, again these areas to the east of Sioux Falls are all under the gun here for these spin-ups, these quick spin-ups that are occurring and may continue to occur as the line advances to the east right now at about, uh, well, it looks like at least 60 miles per hour, if not a little faster. So Worthington, we want you in your basement if you are in Worthington. I know that this radar picture doesn't show it as clearly as I'd like to show, but it, it, there are clearly strong winds moving through Lyon County, Rock County, Nobles County. This whole area is included in a tornado warning right now. If you are in Rock Rapids, Worthington, even to Laverne, uh, those areas all under tornado warnings. So please be in your basement as we speak, as these storms uh, move through Scott. Yeah, here's a quicker look at that too, just highlighting these counties here in the Minnesota, Northwestern Iowa, with the tornado warnings. Uh, and it, the report came in with extensive straight line wind damage too.
is something that uh, was also part of the report with it. So these again are racing to the east, good 60 to 65 miles per hour. These are tornado warnings that we continue to watch this morning. And then behind this, we are also following what continues to be rain, but it has been heavy at times, still on the eastern side of Sioux Falls. It is starting to let up a little bit, but this line does extend south uh, just to the north of Sioux City is where we have, you know, the southern flank of this near Akron, Iowa, Haywarden, just to the east, probably some strong winds. Orange City itself will be uh, experiencing some strong winds, probably a gust front trying to move through that area. But again, we are looking at uh, northwestern Iowa, southwestern Minnesota with the latest here with the tornado warnings that we do have here coming out of the storm center. We are watching these again, uh, tornado warning that is in effect for Lyon, O'Brien, Osceola and Sioux counties, Iowa until 245 this morning. We are looking at a radar indicated tornado over Dune, which is 11 miles north of Sioux Center. Again, moving east, the report says at 55 miles per hour. Also have the uh, tornado warning that is out for um, Jackson, Nobles, Rock County, Minnesota until 3 o'clock. We also have Northern Lyon, Osceola County with that too until 3 o'clock. That is another area here with uh, producing uh, a possible tornado near the Rock Rapids area. And that report came in at about 2.20, so about four minutes ago in and near Rock Rapids. That, too, is quickly moving to the east. Quickly is not a word for it. It's going at 75 miles per hour. So these are booking across Minnesota and northwestern Iowa. Okay, another update here coming in. A tornado warning. This one, again, we'll just probably hear these counties again. Nobles, Rock County is again. They are moving quickly to the east at 55 miles per hour. The most dangerous part of this storm, the possible tornado over Blue Mounds State Park. And again, I've said this before. Here we are, holiday weekend. It's nighttime. Plenty of campers trying to enjoy the holiday weekend. Hopefully they had a way to get their weather warnings because we were looking at that great possibility of seeing strong to severe weather this weekend, especially during the overnight hours for tonight, going into the early morning hours tomorrow. And then for tomorrow itself, we'll have another round of strong to severe weather. This time it will come in probably a little sooner, going into the afternoon hours and extending into the evening. So we are continuing to uh, get information here from the Storm Center as we are looking at these tornado-worn storms now east of Sioux Falls, taking us into Minnesota and northwestern Iowa. Again, we continue to monitor the, the uh, latest coming in from the National Weather Service as to getting any storm reports with these. And uh, right now, we are just looking at radar indicated tornadoes with them, but we have the, uh, the uh, indications here of getting very strong wind gusts itself up to 70 miles per hour that we've seen earlier. And that is something that we will continue to watch or uh, try to monitor as we do go through the uh, evening hour, excuse me, the overnight hours and maybe even leading into early tomorrow morning. So as we do take a look at the possibility for that damaging wind threat, that again will be found across Minnesota and northwestern Iowa as we do go over the next 30 to 45 minutes. Now, the forecast itself here on Futurecast pushes a lot of this through Minnesota and Iowa. Looks like it will be done into those areas. The most dangerous part of those storms will should be done by four o'clock. But it also tries to develop some stronger weather into northeastern South Dakota in and around Watertown. And that will eventually move to the northeast. We'll watch another round of strong to severe thunderstorms as we do hit the afternoon for tomorrow. That future cast is starting to pick up on as early as, say, noon, 1 o'clock. Already picking up on a cluster of thunderstorms, Chamberlain, Huron, and to the south. And it looks like another round of severe weather will be likely for tomorrow. So we'll continue to analyze the information coming in here from the storm center in the meantime we are looking at those tornado warnings across minnesota northwestern iowa they are radar indicated tornado warnings and something that we need to take seriously here the latest one coming in here for nobles in rock county that one is out until three o'clock this morning that tornado was located over blue mounds state park or over laverne 
And again, that coming in here at 225. So just a couple of minutes ago with the latest report on that one. And these are moving to the east very quickly. We've had reports anywhere from 55 to 75 miles per hour. So fast moving storm systems containing very heavy rainfall as the initial gust front does move through. And again, we have to watch out, get into your place of safety as these storms do move through because it's dark. We can't see that tornado if there is one and you need to stay safe. So go ahead and get to the lowest level of your uh, building that you're at, preferably a basement away from windows. You get underneath the steps, that's a good place to be as well and uh, take this uh, seriously as we do continue through the early morning hours with these storms in southeastern South Dakota, but especially now in the Minnesota and northwestern Iowa as we do have tornado warnings out into uh, those locations, Brian. Yes, and that is certainly true. You can see the line of storms here. Again, this is looking at what we can see right now with Laverne in the uh, middle of this as we speak. This whole line of storms now goes down into George, Iowa. George, you are in uh, this tornado warning. Also, Sibley, Iowa, tornado warning. The Worthington area, not yet. Uh, Futurecast does su suggest within the half hour, and that's spot on. This is what things are going to look like here as these storms approach here by 3 a.m. So please be uh, aware of that. Extensive straight line wind damage can be occurring anywhere along this whole line through our southwestern Minnesota counties because the warnings now is stretch up even here to Wilmot and Adrian this morning. That whole cluster is really the main uh, thrust of this whole system as it pivots to the east. And we've had a history of damaging wind and uh, at, at different points here, these tornadic rotations that come through. In particular, Scott, I will note just east of Laverne near Magnolia, that's one hot spot right now that looks to be to be very uh, dangerous at this present second. And then along that line too, we can also identify again widespread winds here uh, running at least to 70 miles per hour. Let me show you this uh, particular product here. This kind of identifies some of these wind features here this morning. And as we zoom in on this, this is again showing us where, again, as you look at the, the storm line moving to the east, and this is, again, picking up very well on that damaging wind line right there in Nobles County. And you can see the extension there a little north of Laverne. This is basically attached to this line. So if you look out even a little farther out down the line, Marshall, Minnesota, and folks here, uh, even up to Slayton, you still need to be mindful of this too, as this push of wind heads in your direction. And uh, we continue with a number of tornado warnings in that zone as we speak. And that's really been kind of the problem here, Scott, is that uh, you get these Doppler radar indicated spots that flare up this morning and it can produce tornadoes and again with being this time of the morning it's going to be very hard to identify those particular cells as we speak but again there's new warnings coming in i want to go back to the overall view here this morning tornado warning for nobles county this is the latest bulletin here as of 2 30 and that does include again portions of nobles county with the storm moving to the east northeast at about 55 miles per hour very fast moving storms so it does not take long when things are moving at that speed here and obviously with that in mind we are going to continue to watch all of this this morning and again right now this is looking at a storm tracker here moving to the east northeast at about 50 plus so here we go and into worthington let me give you a little more specific on that again over blue mounds state park as of 224, so that runs us about eight minutes ago. And then we're looking at Doppler radar indicated tornado moving to the east northeast at 50 plus there. So again, that's tornado and quarter size hail. Lismore in the path of this and also Slayton, Minnesota, if it holds together the northern flank of that at 304 this morning, I believe just got, I'm gonna double check. Is that the new warning, the 232 warning that came out? I see a brand new one, yeah. Okay. This is now Slayton, so yeah, now we're extending. So this is a new tornado warning extension. Southern Murray, 
southeastern Pipestone County until 3 a.m. Thunderstorms with both tornadoes and extensive straight line wind damage possible located over Edgerton, Minnesota, 13 miles to the southeast of Pipestone, moving east at 60. Okay, so very fast movers. And there is, again, looking at that, uh, this is, again, looking at uh, where we're at this morning with uh, the time shown on the screen just coming in just after 3 this morning. But uh, I, would, I would probably caution you, too. We've seen, if anything, Scott, maybe a quickening pace of this. Let me realign that storm tracker just for a moment. And I want to show you the path here. We're going to accelerate that just a hair. Give it, get it close to 60. So based on that, southeastern Pipestone County and then extending into southern Murray. So that would put it into, uh, well, the Curry area right now. And then you've got Huron Lake down the list there too. And uh, let me see if I can pop in a couple of new areas here. And I'm even going to extend this whole this whole thing down into Iowa since we also continue with uh, tornado warnings on that portion of the storm as well this morning. So you can see here at uh, the present moment, I'll bring up the latest here on Storm Tracker. And you can see there, there's here in Lake, there's Sibley, Iowa in the path of this as well. Ocheden, uh, please be in your basement with tornado warnings in effect for these locations. The Lyon County, Iowa tornado warning is set to expire at about 245. So there are at least some pieces of good news. Let me uh, reiterate the Northwest Iowa portion of this. As we sp oh, pan down here, I'm gonna take the storm tracker off for now. Tornado warning in effect still at this moment for Southeastern Lyon, also for Western Osceola, Northeastern Sioux, Northwestern O'Brien until 245. And this line of storms again moving to the east at uh, that 55 to 60 range been pretty common on that. And again, that's going to be continuing to move through Sibley, Iowa. Those spots also Boyden, Iowa right now are moving through there as we speak. George and Matlock, Iowa as we speak as well. So these communities here, uh, as shown on the screen, you are in this zone for tornado coverage. Again, this morning, the potential there. If not, uh, we are looking at, uh, at this point here, I would say at least um, straight line winds as well. If we're not getting uh, tornado winds or tornadic activity, there is an extensive line of wind with this storm system. And uh, we are no strangers to that as uh, these features again are coming out early this morning. Okay, so our time coverage right now, it is 2.36 in the morning. It is going to be a very long day of severe weather. We are just getting started. We have a number of things we need to discuss as we gather information for Kettleland this morning pertaining to the severe weather outlook later today, which will likely feature actually a broader and more comprehensive tornado outbreak. We're very concerned about that. And earlier too. This won't be should not end up being an overnight deal. This one will happen earlier in the afternoon and that will continue into the evening. We will have to watch the initiation of the storm development for the afternoon hours. And right now it could happen near the James River Valley and uh, any storm that does develop can quickly become severe and move quickly to the northeast. That's the storm movement that we are thinking right now as uh, we are looking at future cast tomorrow at around the noon hour, already showing a line of what will end up being severe weather from here on to Mitchell and south. And we will have to watch those as they do move to the north and to the northeast. But we will continue with our coverage here of tornado warnings that are out into Minnesota and northwestern Iowa for the early morning hours. Radar indicated tornadoes, but we do have uh, you know signs of extensive straight line wind damage with those storms in Iowa and in Minnesota. So that is something that uh, we need to pay attention to. We need to take seriously as they are moving at a pretty good clip. Anywhere from 55 miles per hour saw a report with some of the storm movement coming in to the east and northeast at 75 miles per hour. So these are moving at a really fast pace throughout Minnesota and northwestern Iowa. They really picked up speed. Seems like once they hit Interstate 29 and continue to move to the east, they really took off. And we've had a history of numerous tornado warnings with these. We had the funnel cloud reported in Knox County, Nebraska. I believe that was near Crofton. 
We are continuing to monitor things of any uh, other storm reports that we are trying to get here uh, to the storm center itself. So we will uh, monitor that for southeastern Kettle Land. We also have a couple of storms that are also into northeastern South Dakota that we uh, are also trying to get some information on those storms as we speak, trying to bring in some of that uh, updating severe thunderstorm warning here into extreme parts of uh, eastern and northeastern South Dakota. Uh, Coddington County, Day County, severe thunderstorm warnings continue there until 3 o'clock this morning. That's due to wind speeds up to 60 miles per hour. So the storms that we have in the eastern and northeastern South Dakota, say from Watertown to the north, those are for wind speeds near 60 miles per hour and hail about an inch in diameter. So the strongest of the weather is found across southeastern Kettle Land. This morning, again, numerous tornado warnings are in effect, monitoring, monitoring the wire here for some latest information trying to uh, come in as uh, these are radar indicated tornadoes in Minnesota and northwestern Iowa for this morning. Quickly, quickly moving to the northeast anywhere. The report's coming in from 55 miles per hour to 75 miles per hour. An extensive line here of uh, straight line wind damage as uh, indicated by uh, the warning itself. So we have cities being popped up here with our storm tracker uh, getting to Ross at about 317. So we're looking at that uh, you know, a little bit farther down the line if it continues its current speed and its current path. We will continue to uh, watch that as we do go through the early morning hours. I know Brian's doing a couple of things behind the scenes to help bring in some other cities with this as uh, we are looking at uh, severe weather continuing in southwestern Minnesota, northwestern Iowa during the early morning hours. These are fast moving storms as uh, we have a new report here for Rock County, Minnesota that has allowed the tornado warning to expire and that was set to expire here over the next uh, five minutes at a quarter to the top of the hour. Otherwise, we will watch the storms that have radar indicated tornadoes here in southwestern Minnesota and northwestern Iowa. Again, following these storms, extensive straight line wind damage with them, heavy rain, sheets of rain at that, and of course that's wind blown, and any hail inside of those storms too will have to be watched uh, as well. But I think the uh, most dangerous part, of course, being the tornado, followed by the uh, straight line winds that uh, are accompanying these storms in Minnesota and northwestern Iowa. They continue to move quickly to the east and to the northeast for our morning hours. Oh, and just issue two, Brian, a high wind warning. This takes us into Aurora, Bonham, Brule, Charles Mix, Davison, Douglas, Gregory, Hanson, Hutchinson, and Yankton counties with a high wind warning. Could be one of those wake low situations trying to work in behind the the uh, storm system itself as I do click on that to give you more information on that high wind warning there across southeastern South Dakota. We are looking at um, the possibility to see these winds in excess of 70 miles per hour with these strong wind gusts and that's behind the line of severe weather that we have in Minnesota and northwestern Iowa. And that uh, high wind warning takes us out until 7 o'clock this morning. Again, that's more or less south of Interstate, uh, long and south of Interstate 90, behind that main line of thunderstorms that we do have with that high wind warning. Otherwise, uh, update to that tornado warning. Radar indicated, again, canceled Rock County, but continues for Nobles County until 3 o'clock. We are looking at uh, that storm capable of producing tornadoes and straight line wind damage near Wilmont. That's uh, 15 miles to southwest of Slayton and moving to the east at 70 miles per hour. A new severe thunderstorm warning. This takes us in the Dickinson line, Osceola counties, also into Jackson, Murray, Nobles, and Pipestone Rock. That is out until 345 as that is a severe thunderstorm warning uh, with wind speeds of 70 miles per hour or more. So the hail threat doesn't seem to be as high as what it may have been earlier. A lot of this now is becoming a wind threat and uh, this is still an area that we are monitoring because we get those quick spin-ups with it as well.
for the leading edge of the storms as we are monitoring that for this morning, Brian. Yeah, certainly the communities again here to the east of Sioux Falls involved with these storms as we speak. So it's very important that you're in your place of safety and shelter as the, these storms approach from the west. And Worthington right now comes to mind again. It's just a little west of Worthington. As we speak, uh, we're looking at uh, the leading edge near Rushmore. Also, the leading edge of the storm is now moving into uh, the area just on the Iowa side of the border, uh, just west of Ocheden. Sibley, you are involved right now with this tornado warning as well as we speak. That's the southern end of this. The northern extent of the tornado warning area with embedded strong straight line winds is uh, this direction near Chandler, Minnesota. And uh, let me give you the, the picture here as we speak. This is what we're looking at. Wilmot just on the edge right now coming through. Reading Minnesota, you're on the edge too, but this is uh, certainly impacting you as well. So right through Nobles County, strong straight line winds and looking at a possible uh, tornado development within any of these pockets that we are identifying this morning. Uh, again, it's one of those situations where in the nighttime, it is very difficult, if not impossible, to see these structures in these rotating areas. So my best advice, of course, with it being Memorial Day weekend, we've highlighted some of these state parks, too. If you're in an area where you need to get to shelter quickly, uh, you're downstream a little bit, even here on Lake or Fulda, uh, Slayton, go get to some sturdy structure now. Don't wait for this to get right up on you because it's moving at a very fast pace. Uh, leading edge of this, at least 60 miles per hour. Could be even just a, a hair faster than that. And again, at this moment, that is uh, a lot of strength to the storm, obviously dealing with all of this here this morning. And uh, these features are going to continue to move off to the east at a very fast pace. So please be advised of that this morning as uh, communities highlighted there. Again, Worthington looking at this storm within the next, I would say, 10 minutes. That's going to be moving through quickly. And also, Fulda, Minnesota, you are going to be in the path of this very shortly as this line of storms moves in. It's basically a line of storms that have populated things here to the uh, area. Everything to the west of Sioux Falls, uh, as Scott mentioned here a little bit ago, we've got some strong wake low winds. Basically, we're just getting some uh, general strong winds moving in on the back side of this storm. And uh, we want to make you aware of that. But there are no warnings in particular for Sioux Falls at the present moment in terms of severe weather. Um, and uh, everything at this moment, other than one severe thunderstorm warning, including uh, areas northwest of Watertown. So in particular, Webster and Day County looking at a severe thunderstorm warning in that vicinity. That is in effect until 3 a.m. for another uh, 14 minutes. That storm moving north at 45. I'm going to pan up here just quickly to show you these clusters of storms again in the Watertown and uh, Webster vicinities. Again, these have been moving pretty much due north this morning. You can see the expansion of that over the next couple of hours uh, should be dropping in there. It looks like uh, again, pretty quickly uh, with that in mind. So uh, folks there in even Sisseton, I'd kind of keep that in mind as uh, these storms do develop. And it's quite a morning here, Scott. We've already had a lot of wind move through with these first storms and clearly showing at least some of this populating even on the backside. But later today is where it gets more tricky. We're going to go through a lot more of these maps later on as we kick off Kelloland this morning here in uh, less than two hours. But at this moment here, we're again regrouping as we watch these thunderstorms in northwestern Iowa and southwestern Minnesota. So if you're just waking up and you're in Worthington, we would like you to be in your basement. This storm is moving quickly into Worthington as we speak. And uh, it has been uh, really a strong system overnight again uh, moving into some of these same affected communities so it is a tornado warning let's start up the line here the northern end of this southern murray county that's in effect now for chandler 
and uh, also includes Slayton. Tornado warning there. Again, you can see within the uh, next few minutes, uh, it will be moving into Slayton, Minnesota. Also looking at Worthington, it's just on the edge of Worthington right now, moving in quickly, so be in your basement there. And then also down into uh, extreme northern Osceola County, just north of Sibley, we are looking at a tornado warning area. And Scott, it continues to maintain its strength and intensity, so there may be additional warnings farther to the east. If you're in Cottonwood County or Jackson County, Minnesota, I would highly recommend you stay alert to that possibility as these storms are, again, very strong at the present moment. Well, we are concentrating here across Minnesota, northwestern Iowa, because these storms are quickly moving to the east. We also have tornado warnings with them and severe thunderstorm warnings, more or less what they ended up doing here is embedded with the uh, line of storms that we do have and it extends from near Ruthton, Minnesota to the southeast, uh, just to the west of Slayton, looks like just to the west of Worthington. But again, these are quickly moving to the east and northeast between 50 to 70 miles per hour. So, you know, be in those areas more or less in no time. But this is a, a line of storms that's producing a lot of wind and embedded with that, we could get these tornadoes to spin up. That's why we do have those tornado warnings that uh, remain in effect. I believe we have a couple here that go out until the top of the hour. Uh, looking at the updates here, continuing for Nobles County until 3 o'clock this morning. So, yeah, that's one that we will continue to watch. And then we also have uh, other one here that uh, goes until 3 o'clock this morning for uh, Rock County. Again, that is one that's moving to the northeast at 55 miles per hour. And anywhere with that line of thunderstorms, we could get wind gusts over 70 miles per hour with straight line winds and then even those quick spin-ups, which we have seen before in, in the past. Maybe not necessarily uh, with any uh, local storm reports coming in for the early morning hours today, but uh, we have seen the situation before over the years where we have these lines moving through with straight line winds and embedded in that, we can get the quick spin-ups of a tornado. And that's why we have those tornado warnings across southeastern South Dakota, uh, excuse me, to Minnesota and northwestern Iowa is where we have those tornado warnings. They are east of Interstate 29. So we have numerous cities, towns popping up here with our storm tracks, and that's the way to do it, too, because of the uh, movement of these, anywhere from 55 to 70 miles per hour. And as we transition some of those wind speeds down to the surface, that's what they're coming in at, at 70 miles per hour or more. So I think the latest here is with a uh, severe thunderstorm warning, uh, 70 miles per hour or more going into through Lyon County, Minnesota until 315. But again, uh, we also continue to watch those tornado warnings, which are out until 3 o'clock this morning, one of those being Nobles County. And uh, uh, as we go into parts of uh, the more parts of Minnesota, Jackson, Nobles County, continue with those uh, tornado warnings out until 3 o'clock this morning. So what's going on behind it, too, cannot be ignored either. We have winds working in behind us with what's known as a wake low, and those winds can gust up to 70 miles per hour. In fact, we do have a high wind warning that is in effect in parts of southeastern South Dakota because of that. It's not due to any individual line or thunderstorm that is moving through. It's just strong gusty winds working behind the system, and it kind of works with what's going on in the leading edge of those uh, warnings that we do have now in the Minnesota, able to push that out with our very strong winds. Again, high wind warning, wind gusts up to 70 miles per hour in parts of southeastern South Dakota. And that high wind warning actually goes until seven o'clock this morning. So uh, it will be a windy start to your day. And then we'll have to watch for redeveloping thunderstorms as we go through the day tomorrow. But I think those will develop a lot earlier. Again, sometimes we say it all depends on how the atmosphere recovers or reloads. And I think we will see that because something we've seen over the years when we have a big trough in the southwestern United States, we always wait for this parent low to come out. And once it does, that's usually the big show when we have severe weather. And we will see that for tomorrow across eastern South Dakota along the James River Valley and to the east including Minnesota and northwestern Iowa. So that's uh, what we will uh, watch for tomorrow. In the meantime, for this morning, we do continue following those storms in southwestern Minnesota. 
quickly moving to the east for the morning hours, a good 55 to 70 miles per hour. So very fast moving storms. And again, behind it, we continue to watch the high wind warning in southeastern South Dakota. So that's the latest we have going with those warnings. We're going to check for any new information that we may have here. In fact, we do have a new tornado warning here, radar indicated. This takes us into Cottonwood and Murray County. And that takes us until 315, another radar indicated tornado. Along with it, straight line winds located over Slayton, moving east at 55 miles per hour. So again, southwestern Minnesota. Tornado warning, new tornado warning out. Most dangerous part of the storm over Slayton, moving to the east at 55 miles per hour. And that is for Cottonwood and Murray County in southwestern Minnesota. 315, tornado warning lasts until then. Brian's drawing in the storm track with this, moving about 55 miles per hour. Brings us into these locations as we go over the next several minutes and your chance uh, a chance excuse me chandler uh slayton folda in the line of this as uh, it is moving fast uh, to the east at about 55 miles per hour brian Yes, and uh, obviously these things are uh, really developing quickly in that area. Um, and, and again, continue to stand by for more severe weather coverage here as uh, uh, we are expanding our view here this morning as we prepare for the morning show as well. Uh, obviously, there's a lot to get to, but these current tornado warnings need to be addressed quickly, and uh, that's exactly what we're doing right now. So we're just piecing that together. If you're in Slayton, you need to be in the basement as a precaution as these storms are quickly moving to the northeast. Again, that's been the severe weather threat, and it's going to continue to move east. Uh, it looks like we're going to probably see more of this expanding uh, into Cottonwood County and even down uh, into Worthington. We've also had... Uh, very strong cells here clipping out of Lyon, northeastern Lyon County, and here before and within the hour, again, looking at where we're at and where we're going, you can see that powerful line of storms moving into western Nobles County as we speak. And I was just looking at uh, the latest scan here, Scott, on uh, some of these pockets that have developed and uh, as we speak here, Worthington, uh, we just keep pointing that out because uh, obviously the population center there uh, under uh, heavy rain and also that uh, strong wind round the lake too now uh, down to the southeast of Worthington uh, in right on the edge of that line. And then uh, as you mentioned here, the Slayton vicinity is just getting involved. So if you trace it diagonally right up to Slayton, up Highway 59 right now is where that is all coming in line. Falda, you're in the middle of that too. And then here's to the east, you can see Wyndham and some of these communities toward Jackson, Minnesota. Not yet, but coming your direction. Be advised of that and prepare accordingly as we have a cluster of tornado warnings in effect for that entire region, Scott. Um, and in fact, uh, it's it's been quite a night here to watch these things congeal and come together here as we speak. This is the latest here. Um, I'm going to draw this out here. This is, again, the tornado warning that's in effect for Worthington right here. Also looking at Slate, Minnesota, this whole area up into Murray County and the extension now into just a little bit of Cottonwood County, too. And then there's also a zone right here, a third tornado warning. So it's basically that whole stretch where these things are really going at a fast clip. It's fast moving. 60 miles per hour or faster. So as we speak, time right now is 2.56, and you're watching live coverage of severe weather in southwest Minnesota, and uh, tornado warnings are going to probably be, uh, in fact, I know they are extended past the top of the hour, Scott. They, we do have a couple out there until 3.15. Um, you know, just trying to keep ahead of it because they are fast moving. You got to keep continuing to issue them down the line. But that area there uh, south of Worthington, I think uh, just crossing the border into uh, Iowa, near Ocheaton, Iowa, that's looking more and more interesting uh, on the radar as well. So, you know, we're starting to see something into that location southwest of Round Lake. 
Uh, this takes us uh, south of Worthington, so th that's an area that could easily get a spin up too, and that's the reason why we do have these tornado warnings out. Um, and the, they, as, as Brian said, that they do extend uh, to the north, and that is something uh, you're getting into Marshall, Minnesota. There is a severe thunderstorm warning for Marshall, Minnesota. Um, probably see some wind gusts there, 60, maybe 70 miles per hour once that storm does make its way into your area. So the leading edge of this is something that uh, we'll have to continue to watch. Uh, moving through Slayton at the moment, Worthington with some very heavy rainfall as it is quickly moving to the east and northeast around 60 miles per hour. Now the leading edge of that is what we do have on the storm track here. And uh, behind it, we will continue with rain. I've been mentioning the high wind uh, warning that we do have in southeastern South Dakota uh, with the uh, wake low moving in behind this system. And that just uh, gives it a little more punch, if you will, going for the leading edge of the storms through Minnesota and northwestern Iowa during the early morning hours. Uh, new update here, severe thunderstorm warning uh, continues until... 345, and this takes us again into parts of Iowa, Minnesota, more or less those same areas that we've been highlighting. And coming up here at the top of the hour, uh, expiring the tornado warning for parts of Murray and uh, Pipestone counties. So that is uh, good news for uh, that location there. And as we've been mentioning, right behind the system, we are continuing with periods of rain, but uh, we also have very strong winds into uh, southeastern South Dakota. And uh, again, in northwestern Iowa, southwestern Minnesota, where we have the radar indicated tornadoes moving through uh, those locations for this morning as that whole area just continues to uh, quickly move to the east as it is bulging out into uh, those areas for the early, early morning hours. And it's something that uh, we continue to monitor here in the Storm Center. And that's why we are doing our coverage here for you early this morning as we are watching that leading edge uh, through Worthing, Worthington, excuse me, right now, uh, moving uh, quickly to the east. So that's the latest here from the Storm Center across parts of southeastern South Dakota. Now, some of the rain does extend into Watertown. Yeah, <laughs> Also looking at uh, a severe thunderstorm warning into uh, northeastern South Dakota. This takes us into Day County, uh, looking at the severe thunderstorm warning there. 60 mile per hour winds, maybe one inch hail. But the big part of the, the coverage here this morning is southeastern South Dakota as we do have that line of severe weather. It extends through Pipestone, getting close to Marshall, Minnesota right now, and to the south and to the southeast. Even getting into uh, northwestern Iowa, we are following those uh, locations with the uh, embedded tornadoes with this line that is quickly moving to the east. Straight line wind damage associated with it as well. And just behind it, we do have uh, very strong winds with that wake low trying to move through those locations too. Just checking a couple of things here behind the scenes. If we can get some uh, newer information here. I uh, mentioned the expiration there of the tornado warning for now Murray and uh, Pipestone counties. So that's some good news there. Uh, but still continuing the uh, severe thunderstorm warnings across uh, southwestern Minnesota and northwestern Iowa. That's out for about another 15 minutes. Been mentioning the possibility for the straight line winds with these storms and we've had you know history of very heavy rainfall can't take away that fact either very heavy rainfall with these storms in minnesota and northwestern iowa um, we have had that one report that uh, came out earlier of a funnel cloud being spotted in Knox County, Nebraska, that takes us into extreme northeastern Nebraska, uh, looking at uh, that funnel cloud. And that report came in at one o'clock this morning, and here we are still covering these storms here at three o'clock in the morning. And you know what? Unfortunately, we'll have to watch this as we do go through the day today. Uh, about 12 hours from now, we'll probably have another round of severe weather across eastern South Dakota. As that parent low comes in from the southwest, that will spark the strong to severe weather with our storms later this afternoon. Right now, I believe we do have the one tornado warning out, and this uh, takes us into uh, near the Slayton area, looking at central Murray County, western Cottonwood County in southwestern Minnesota. 
and that tornado warning is out until 315 this morning. It is moving to the east at about 55 miles per hour. So that's the one warning that we still have in effect. Uh, it's uh, the heavy rain right now over the Slayton area. The leading edge of that is uh, just to the east of Slayton, getting close to uh, Westbrook, Minnesota. Uh, it's even Dundee, Minnesota, leading edge of that storm. And Fulda probably getting some very strong winds at the moment. So that's the uh, latest that we do have on our tornado warnings. Otherwise, any area to see here across southeastern, uh, excuse me, southwestern Minnesota, and even into northwestern Iowa, we could get those straight line winds to move through. And that too will cause damage. We know that. We've had a history of that over the years of the straight line wind damage with these embedded lines that uh, do move through. To the north of this area, we are still looking at uh, showers and thunderstorms in and around Watertown. And that does continue to extend to the north. I uh, mentioned the Wabay area with some showers, thunderstorms there. Non severe right now in eastern South Dakota. In fact, all of South Dakota uh, looking at non severe thunderstorms, but we do have gusty winds in southeastern South Dakota, uh, right behind that initial line that is moving through Minnesota and northwestern Iowa. We are looking at very strong winds with a high wind warning in southeastern South Dakota for this morning. We are also following uh, the thunderstorm there, capable of producing a tornado. And again, that uh, tornado warning is out until 3.15 this morning. So for about another 10 minutes, we continue to follow central Murray County and western Cottonwood County in southwestern Minnesota uh, near the Slayton area. That report coming in about 15 minutes ago, so it's well to the east of Slayton, but Slayton itself is continuing with very heavy rainfall uh, with some gusty winds at the moment as those storms are moving through Minnesota and even extending into northwestern Iowa. It looks like the severe thunderstorm warning itself uh, does extend into northwestern Iowa. And again, that thunderstorm warning uh, may see some wind gusts of 70 miles per hour or more with that uh, particular storm as it is moving across extreme northwestern Iowa for this morning. So uh, go ahead and check the wire here for uh, more updates coming in here from uh, the Storm Center. Nothing new as of five, six minutes ago. Oh, looks like we just got something, spoke too soon. Uh, tornado warning now in for Lyon County until 3.30 as uh, we continue to follow the line of storms capable of uh, producing tornadoes there. And again, extensive straight line wind damage, the most dangerous part of this storm looks like it is just to the southeast of Marshall. So that was uh, that's the northern fringe or the northern part of the storm system near Marshall. We mentioned that a little earlier with a severe thunderstorm warning. Now it has become a tornado warning and then is moving to the northeast at 65 miles per hour. So again, some of the some of the verbiage with this warning coming into the storm center shows that this is a tor uh, tornado warning radar indicated here for southeastern Lyon County. Uh, out until 3.30 this morning. We are looking at uh, the most dangerous part of the storm, located about eight miles southeast of Marshall, quickly moving to the northeast at 65 miles per hour. So again, you want to be in your place of safety, the lowest level of the house or building that you're in. You want to be away from windows. And a good rule of thumb is to put as many walls between you and the possible tornado that you can. Uh, and if you get into the basement, so a safe place to be and one of the safest places in the basement is to be underneath the steps that leads you into the basement. Just gives you an extra layer of protection above you. So that's what is uh, some of the latest information that we are looking at here in the Storm Center. Brian, do you have some new information coming in? Well, just checking in with our news department here this morning. I know in Sioux Falls there are trees uh, scattered in a few spots, a few trees that have been uprooted. Uh, our news crews are working on some of that too this morning as we pick up some of that information. So obviously uh, these storms have had a history of producing damage and uh, being the time of morning it is here at seven minutes after three. It's dark. If you're trying to get out, it may not be a good idea. Let's wait till light and assess any power lines that could be down. Those types of issues here, Scott, this morning. 
So as we take a look at what's going on, Killaland Live Doppler HD right now, uh, there's that tornado warning I mentioned a little bit ago in and around the Marshall area that takes us out until 3.30 this morning. Uh, now we are looking at the uh, northern part of this line here across southwestern Minnesota, able to give us a quick spin up. Again, that is a radar indicated tornado. And then we have the warning here for Cottonwood out until about 3.15. So give that about another eight minutes. It does extend into uh, Murray County as well. And then over Brewster, very heavy rainfall. In fact, as we do bring this up, I'm not surprised to see that white, which is an indication that yes, we do have some hail inside of this storm. It's just a matter of getting rid of that hail. And once we start to see that white go away, well, that's more or less when it is dropping its hail. So that is something that we will have to watch uh, near the Brewster area, but especially to the east and northeast as the storm is moving to the northeast. Now extended to that to the southwest from Sioux City, Lamars, Akron, Iowa, we are looking at some general uh, rain, maybe periods of heavy rain, but it's behind that location that we are with the uh, strong westerly winds. It's that wake low situation that we do have. You know, we could see wind gusts that are not related to thunderstorms here coming in maybe around 70 miles per hour behind this line. And that's a situation that we have seen before in previous uh, thunderstorm outbreaks in uh, Kettle Land. But again, moving quickly to the east and to the northeast here in the Minnesota, we continue to follow these uh, severe thunderstorm warnings as well as these uh, tornado warnings. The most uh, recent one here in and around the Marshall area as uh, that one uh, continues to, to be followed here in the storm center for that possible uh, tornado with it. Again, it is radar indicated uh, near the Marshall area. The latest report coming in here uh, suggested it was uh, eight miles away from uh, Marshall. So let's go ahead and bring that up once again. Uh, give you some information on that. Uh, the report coming in here uh, just a little bit after 3 o'clock. We're coming up on 310 uh, with the uh, the line capable, capable again of producing tornadoes and straight line wind damage located eight miles to the southeast of Marshall. So again, this is moving to the northeast at 65 miles per hour. So we have a lot going on still at uh, a little bit after three o'clock this morning in Minnesota and Northwestern Iowa. As we do bring up the velocity data here, we, what we typically look for is that area that where we have the reds and the greens rubbing up right next against each other. And looks like we are starting to see at least some of that, but it has moved a little farther to the north now of Marshall. Because again, these are moving quickly to the northeast at 65 miles per hour. So maybe near Green Valley, we may see that quick spin up with the uh, line of storms moving through. As we do take a look at what else is going on here across southwestern Minnesota with our look at our velocity data, but I want to bring up our hail product too, as you know, that one storm just to the east of Worthington, east of Brewster right now, and again, quickly moving to the east, that's the hail, what you see there in white and the leading edge of this, probably some very strong winds with it. So these storms uh, moving through Minnesota, parts of Northwestern Iowa for this morning, and the rain does extend back into Eastern South Dakota. Here's a look at a couple of new uh, reports coming in. Uh, this takes us into Clark County. We had a thunderstorm here near 60 miles per hour. Hillcrest Colony, that is in, looks like, central Clark County, and a wind gust here about 60 miles per hour, uh, just uh, to the west of Wallace. So we've had some reports here of thunderstorm wind gusts of 60 miles per hour in Clark County with the storms that moved through earlier. Now let's go ahead and expand the view into northeastern South Dakota. We also have these thunderstorms that are you know, non-severe right now, and uh, we'll continue to watch them because this is in the uh, severe thunderstorm watch, which is out until 8 o'clock this morning. So these storms have the capability of producing hail, maybe around an inch in diameter, but some of those wind gusts will approach 60 miles per hour or more. So that's northeastern South Dakota. This is uh, eastern and southeastern Kettle Land. The leading edge of that uh, system there throughout Minnesota needs to be watched closely because that's the area where we do have wind gusts of 60 miles per hour. Some areas even more than that. Um, and then behind it, we have the non-thunderstorm winds that are coming in with that high wind warning. 
of 70 miles per hour with those wind gusts. Otherwise, sustained winds are coming in around 35 to 45 miles per hour. I'll see if I can bring up uh, some of those wind speeds for you too, and, and that will give you an indication as to what's going on with some of these winds that we do have in southeastern South Dakota. Especially in the northwestern Iowa, some of those wind speeds coming in uh, with those gusts near 70 miles per hour or more. So yeah, we have very strong winds there across the east and for the southeast as we are looking at, uh, again, Minnesota, Worthington, well to the east of you. There's a look at the latest updates as well as uh, the Marshall area. Looks like the most dangerous part of that storm now is to the east and northeast of the Marshall area, quickly moving to the northeast at 65 miles per hour. Here we are coming on about 3.13, uh, expiring the uh, tornado warning for Cottonwood and Murray County. Otherwise, we continue with a severe thunderstorm warning that takes us into Lyon County until 3.45. So this is the latest here from the Storm Center. Let me go ahead and see if I can take off this reflectivity real quick here. Get rid of some of this just to, there we go. Show you that we, what we have highlighted in blue here in Minnesota, northwestern Iowa, that's a severe thunderstorm watch. And that is out until 8 o'clock. So that covers northwest Iowa, much of western and southwestern Minnesota, even getting into parts of eastern and northeastern South Dakota. Here across southeastern South Dakota, highlighted in red, that's a tornado watch, and that is out until 4 o'clock this morning. It does include the Sioux Falls area, but again, a lot of this is east of us, not overly concerned about it. The one thing you will notice, the strong winds working in behind that system. In fact, see if I can bring up where we do have the high wind warning. There we go, right here in the south central and southeastern South Dakota. Let's keep that up for the moment. And then bring back our reflectivity here. Get that to come in. Now notice that we have the high winds behind the main line of thunderstorms in Minnesota and northwestern Iowa. Again, that's a high wind warning for those counties I just showed you, highlighted in orange. We do have winds trying to push in behind the system. We've seen it before in situations like this. It's called a wake low, pushing in behind the system. We could get some of those wind gusts around uh, 70 miles per hour. Uh, with some of those stronger wind speeds. So that's a look at that high wind warning. Okay, I'll go ahead and get rid of that. And then I will bring back what we usually show during our severe weather coverage. And uh, that is our warnings, our polygon warnings that you do see uh, blinking here across Minnesota and even to extreme northwestern Iowa. So bring up that, bring up some of the velocity data. That one into Lyon County, Minnesota, continues to quickly move to the northeast. Uh, good clip, about 65 miles per hour. That uh, tornado warning is set to expire at 3.30 this morning as we are watching these now on the very eastern fringe of our Kettleland area. So this is our velocity data again. Not seeing anything of, you know, too exciting there with these storms for velocity data east of Worthington. But boy, that looks like some large hail to me east of Brewster, um, getting close to Okabina as again, that's a severe thunderstorm warning out until 345 and that takes us into Jackson County. So that again is the latest here from the Storm Center. We will uh, break coverage for the time being but we will uh, give you updates as conditions do warrant. You've been watching severe weather coverage during the early morning hours in Minnesota and northwestern Iowa. And of course, it all started around one o'clock in southeastern South Dakota. Keep in mind the forecast too. Brian, yeah. I think you wanted to say something, but keep in mind the forecast for later today, we are looking at another round of severe weather and that will start earlier. It wouldn't, be, it wouldn't surprise me if we start to see severe thunderstorm warnings one o'clock or shortly thereafter from information I saw. Yes, and the most important thing as we let go of some of this coverage, obviously if anything warrants will pop back in. We're preparing for the morning show, Kettleland this morning. 
We believe there is a uh, solid evidence of a major severe weather outbreak today across eastern Ketherland. We expect there will be tornado activity in eastern Ketherland starting, and again, I know you're updating the, the marquee here mm -hmm. on the timing of all this, but the, the main point at 3 in the morning here, we want to put out that moderate risk. That's your dark red. That is the highest concern, but surrounding that, a very large area in an enhanced risk, including Sioux Falls. The progression of this storm, we have seen it from uh, Saturday into Sunday slowing down, and basically the tornado threat is expanded now into a big chunk of eastern South Dakota. And once this gets going, we need to make sure that whatever you have planned on this Memorial Day, you have a plan in place. If there's severe weather, you know where to go. Uh, that's my high recommendation, and today is one of those rare, moderate risk events in eastern South Dakota into western Minnesota. And uh, Scott, it is going to be a rough day, and as you mentioned, this activity can flare up. Uh, we're going to be dealing with ongoing scattered thunderstorms all morning. I do believe that that's going to also play a direct role in how this whole thing develops today and it makes it ever every bit that much more complex when you have to deal with you know round after round of storms but uh, certainly all the ingredients are on the table for tornado activity today so as we leave you this morning we just want to plant that thought in your mind that yeah we do need to be extra aware of that and we will have a lot more to say certainly here as we start Ketherland this morning here in just a little over an hour scott Thanks for watching. This has been severe weather coverage across eastern and southeastern Kelloland during the early morning hours. As Brian said a little bit ago, we have another round of severe weather. This one will start earlier in the day. Expect things to fire again by 1 o'clock in the afternoon or shortly thereafter.